and keeps us in the saving faith. May God strengthen us through word and sacrament as he promised us to do today. Please rise. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The Spirit of God has made me. The breath of the Almighty gives me life. Where can I go from your Spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. The Lord said, My spirit will not contend with man forever. O oh Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, or discipline me in your wrath. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am faint. O oh Lord, heal me. For my bones are in agony. Turn, O oh Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Jesus said to his disciples, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water Flesh is birth to flesh, but the Spirit is birth to Spirit. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Hallelujah. Please be seated for our opening. <laughs>
Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord, Lord of my life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy for patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord of life, live in us that we may live for you. Amen. Created faith in their hearts 
and strengthen them so they can confirm that faith before you today. The first reading from God's Word is taken from the book of Ezekiel the prophet. In a very vivid way, we see what the Holy Spirit does. He takes people who by nature are dead in sin. There's no desire of them coming to faith or to come to life. And through the Word, God the Holy Spirit brings to life and strengthens in faith. We read, The hand of the Lord was upon me. He brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley which was full of bones. He had me pass through them and go all over among them. There were very many on the valley floor, and they were very dry. He said to me, Son of man, can these dry bones live? I answered, Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says to these bones. I am about to make breath enter you so that you will live. I will attach tendons to you. I will put flesh back on you. I will cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you will live. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling. As the bones came together, one bone connecting to another. As I watched, tendons were attached to them. Then flesh grew over them, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind that this is what the Lord God says. From the four winds, come, O wind, and breathe into these slain, so that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. Breath entered them, and they came back to life. They stood on their feet, a very, very large army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They are saying, Our bones are dried up. Our hope is lost. We have been completely cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them that this is what the Lord God says. My people, I am going to open your graves and raise you up from your graves and bring you back to the soil of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. I will settle you on your own land. And you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our singing of today's psalm, Psalm 104, which can be found in the front of the hymnal.
God's word is the account of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. We read from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. <clears throat> Suddenly a sound like the rushing of a violent wind came from heaven, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw divided tongues that were like fire resting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, since the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak fluently. Now there were godly Jewish men from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When this sound was heard, a crowd came together and was confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were completely baffled and said to one another, Look, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them speaking in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia and of Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring in our own languages the wonderful works of God. They were all amazed and perplexed. They kept saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocked them and said they are full of new wine. And Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and spoke loudly and clearly to them. <coughs> Men of Judea, and all you residents of Jerusalem, understand this and listen closely to my words. These men are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only the third hour, or namely 9 a.m., third hour of the day. On the contrary, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is what God says will happen in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. <clears throat> Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a rising cloud of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And this will happen. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Sorrow has filled your heart. 
Nevertheless, I am telling you the truth. It is good for you that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world about sin, about righteousness, and about judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will no longer see me. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We join now in confessing our Christian faith using the third article of the Apostles' Creed plus Luther's explanation. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I believe that I cannot by my own thinking or choosing believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and fully forgives all sins to me and all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead, and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Please be seated for our first hymn that is chosen by our confirmant, Wyatt Levitsky. We join in hymn 526.
Isn't that a good day, an exciting day, and right now a little nerve-wracking day? But we're going to carry on our conversations like we have in catechism class. And you're not standing before the angry world that hates Christ and God's word. You have before you brothers and sisters in Christ that have confessed their faith too. I mean, once upon a time, and also young people that some people be in your place too. This examination is not a pass or fail. You have the spirit, you have confessed your faith to me, and you will with your confirmation vows. But confirmation, you are confirming what you have learned and become convinced of. And I pray you'll keep growing in the faith. I thank you for the answers you've prepared for today's discussion, and may we all benefit, I know we will benefit from them. So why it? We began our lessons this year just talking in general about the knowledge of God. Our conscience is the voice in us that tells us what is right and what is wrong. What does our conscience also tell us about God? Our conscience teaches us we've sinned and God is going to punish. So it teaches us God's holy and is angry with us. We sang about that, God's righteous frown. If creation and our conscience tell us that there is a God and there, that he's holy, why do we still need to hear and read God's word? Because the Bible creates faith. Right. Faith comes from hearing the message of Christ. Thank you. You'll be rotating between Wyatt and Philip. You did great. Get ready for the next questions. Philip, how did the Bible come into being? The Bible came into being when men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So the Bible is God's verbally inspired word. We do well to listen to it. Why is it so important that we continue studying and learning the Bible? It is important because it is able to make us wise for salvation through faith. Right, and it keeps us in that faith. Thank you. We did focus on the Ten Commandments this year. That was our main focus, and so that is the law. Martin Luther talks about three purposes of the law, the guide, then a curb, and a mirror. Besides serving as a curb against our sinful desires and a guide for us to live God-pleasing lives, what important purpose does God's law serve for us? The law shows us our sins. Shows us our sins like a mirror. Why is it so important that the law show us our sins? It teaches us all we need and that God's mercy. We all need to. That we need God's mercy. It shows that we all fall short of God's glory and we need forgiveness. Right. Okay, thank you. Philip, what moves the Christian, what moves you, to gladly and willingly obey God's commands? God's mercy that is undying for all. Okay. Bible says we love him because he first loved us. Why are we unable to keep God's will holy as God demands? We are unable because we are hostile to God. That is who we are by nature, hostile to God and, and dead in sin. Like those dead bones we heard about in the first reading. Okay. Back to you, Wyatt. Now we're looking at the Ten Commandments. The first commandment. What does it mean? To have another God, as it says in the first commandment, we shouldn't have another God. To worship or serve something else. Right. Ahead of God. There is only one God. We should worship, serve Him. Why is it foolish for us to fear, love, and trust in anyone or anything other than God? Because there is only one God that can help and save us. Right. Nothing's impossible for Him. Right? Okay, thank you. Second commandment, Philip, how do people misuse God's name as it says we're not to do in the second commandment? People misuse God's name by lying, deceiving, cursing, swearing, by using witchcraft. Okay, so what is the proper use of God's name? We should use God's name to pray, praise, and give thanks. Right, thank you. Moving on to the third commandment, which says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Sabbath means rest. Where is the only place we can find rest? In Jesus, in his word, and in the sacrament. Yep, Jesus 
says, come to me, I'll give you rest. Why is it a good thing for us to gather regularly in church and to hear God's word? It is a good thing that we can encourage and be encouraged. All right, thank you. Pray we can all remember that. It is good for us to be here, like David said in the psalm. How do we rightfully honor our parents and those in authority, as God says, to do with the fourth commandment? We should obey, serve, and show respect to our parents. Okay, what blessings does God give us through our parents? Our parents provide for us and teach us God's word. So they take care of our physical needs and also their spiritual needs. Thank you. Moving on to the fifth commandment, you shall not murder. Why is each day of a person's life on this earth important? This is or her, his or her only opportunity to come to faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah, we talk about a person's life being their time of grace. Time of grace. Who alone has the right to end a person's life? God has the only right to end a life. In 1 Samuel 2, 6, the Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. Moving on to the sixth commandment, you shall not commit adultery. What warning does God give those who disobey this commandment? They will not inherit the kingdom of God, and they will go to hell. Okay. And what do God's gifts of forgiveness and salvation inspire us to do in connection with this commandment? They inspire us to live a moral life of pure thoughts and to respect marriage. So as the text you're going to hear in, in for the sermon reminds us, you don't go to the left or you go to the right. You stay in God's word and you honor him. him who, he who created marriage and made it a blessing. Thank you. The seventh commandment about you shall not steal. What are God-pleasing ways to obtain our possessions? We obtain our possessions through work, gifts, and inheritance. Okay. And how does God want us to use the things we've been given? God wants us to use our possessions to provide for your family, give wealth to the need, and honor him with our offerings. Okay, thank you. We honor him when we take care of our family, when we uh, give to church and those that are in need, and when we pay our taxes. The Eighth Commandment, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Why? Because a person's name is a very wonderful blessing. Why is a person's name more valuable than great riches or the best perfume, as the Bible says? A person's name is a reputation of what people would think of them. Right. When they hear your name, right away something comes to mind, positive or negative. And we, we want it to be positive, as God wants it to be positive. What does God want us to do to protect a person's good name? God wants us to speak well for them and defend their name and uh, defend them. Defend them. Put the best construction on, on things if they say something or do something. Okay? A couple more questions here with the Ten Commandments. The Ninth and the Tenth Commandment both talk about you shall not covet. Desire what belongs to somebody else. But God gave it to them. Why is coveting such a serious sin? People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. Okay, you quoted the Bible, so yes, we need to take that to heart. Why should we be content with what we have? We should be content because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Again, you quoted the scripture. It's always good to go back to God's word for guidance. Thank you. Bill, who is the only one that's perfectly obeyed God's commandments? Jesus. Why is it important that Jesus has kept the commandments perfectly? He had to live a holy life so that his righteousness would become mine through faith. Right. We need a righteous, holy Savior, and he is that. Now, how does Christ's righteousness become mine? Through faith. In Romans 1, verses 16 and 17, it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Thank you. 
you again for the passage from Scripture. We'll continue with our order of service as we will sing Philip's choice of him. Spirit helps us in our weakness, 
We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Okay, so the Holy Spirit helps us with our prayers. Thank you. Moving on with the parts of the Lord's Prayer, we begin our pr the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray to our Father who is in heaven. <coughs> How is it we can call God our Father? God hears and answers our prayers. God provides for everything we need. God disciplines us for our good. God protects us from evil. Okay, and all that's made possible because Jesus reconciled us to God. We were enemies, now we're God's children and friends. And that's in baptism too. What does it mean, keep God's name holy? We want to keep, we want God to help us live for him, and we want God to help us bring the gospel to others. Right, thank you. And we pray, your kingdom come. What do we mean by that phrase? That we want God to keep us in his faith, and we also want God to help us live for him and grow in our his faith. Okay? And when we pray, your will be done, uh, what is God's will that we're asking God to carry out? To speak his word faithfully and have all people to be saved and to lead a whole So this is a model prayer, Lord's Prayer. When we usually think of praying, we ask the Lord, give me this, give me that, give me this. It's not until the fourth petition when God says, this is how you are to pray. Give me my daily bread. If God gives us our daily bread without our asking, why then should we even ask God to give it to us? It shows that we trust in God for all that we need and we are not to worry. Okay. And now with forgiveness. What does the good news of God's forgiveness in Christ lead us to do towards those who sin against us? The goodness of God's forgiveness helps us to be kind, merciful, and forgive. Right. Forgive as we have been forgiven. Thank you. Next petition, the Lord's Prayer, is lead us not into temptation. But God doesn't lead anyone into temptation. So what are we asking God to do? We are asking God to strengthen He will certainly do that. In what ways does God deliver us from evil? God keeps it away from us. He uses it for our good. And so we repent and it will strengthen us. Okay, thank you. These last two questions each will answer now is based on everything they've learned and become convinced of confession of faith. They'll answer the same questions. Why, how do you know that God loves you? And that you will go to heaven when you die. Because I believe when Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And how are you going to remain confident of that, your salvation? I can only remain confident in my salvation through the word, 2 Timothy 3.15. And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise through faith in Christ Jesus. Thank you very much for your answer. God keep you in your faith. Philip, how do you know that God loves you and that you will go to heaven when you die? I know that God loves me and I will go to heaven because in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20, it says, God made Jesus who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And how are you going to remain confident of your salvation from this day forward? I can remain confident because God will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 1 verse 8. Thank you for your confession. God keep you strong in that faith. At this time, we will have our next song sung by the choir. The congregation is invited to join in singing stanza four, which will be posted on the screen.
Grace, mercy, and peace, and every spiritual blessing belong to you and me, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as God has poured his Spirit onto us and in us, that we may believe and be saved. Amen. God's word for our encouragement is the context around the confirmation verse both you, Wyatt, and Philip have chosen for your confirmation to remember this day. You chose verse 9 of Joshua chapter 1. We read the context, verses 1 to 9. This is what happened after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. The Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, the attendant of Moses, Moses, my servant, is dead. So prepare to cross the Jordan River that lies in front of you. You and all this people, prepare to go into the land that I am about to give to the people of Israel. I have given you every place where the sole of your foot has stepped, just as I promised, as I promised Moses. From the wilderness and from Lebanon to the great river, the Euphrates River, all the land of the Hittites, as far as the Mediterranean Sea, where the sun sets, this will be your territory. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not abandon you, and I will not forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will divide this land among these people, this land which I swore to their fathers that I would give to this people. Just be strong and very courageous. Be careful to act according to the entire law which my servant Moses commanded for you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may succeed wherever you go. This book of the law must never depart from your mouth, and you are to meditate on it day and night, so that you will act faithfully according to everything written in it, because then you will prosper in everything you do, and you will succeed. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified and do not be overwhelmed. Because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This is God's word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, especially you, our confidants, wives, and Philip. Be strong and courageous. It sounds almost like an army officer telling his soldiers to be ready for war. Be strong and courageous. Sounds kind of like the football coach telling his athletes, be ready now for battle. In either of those cases, be it football or be it war, for us to be strong and courageous, trusting in ourself, it's going to leave us lacking. Maybe we've had success before, and that will give us some courage and strength. But unless we base our courage and strength in the Lord, we're eventually going to fail. So for your confirmation today, and as we celebrate Pentecost, we're reminded to be strong and courageous. How? In the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has chosen to work through His means of grace, His Word, His sacraments. He takes us, who by nature are dry bones, He takes us by nature who are enemies of God, he brings us to life through his word. And he makes us to be children of God. I want to ask you if you've ever heard of anybody be called by these names. Shamua. You know anybody named Shamua? Shaphat. Shaphat, ever heard of him? I got Palti. I guess I haven't talked my catechism too well. Gadiel? Heard of him? Gaddy? Amiel? Sether? Nabi? Gail? No? 
know? Honestly, neither have I. But they're in the Bible. These men, I'm sure, when they were sent out on the task given to them, they would have been, you'd look at them as they're strong and courageous men. These were ten of the twelve spies that were sent into the promised land. They're going to go out on our behalf. They're going to inspect this promised land. They're going to give us a report of what it's like. We're just about ready to go in, but we need to know what it's like and how to prepare for it. These ten men who, if you remember any of their names, good for you. I didn't expect you to remember the names. We don't name our kids after these guys' names because, in, in essence, they failed. They were not faithful. They came back from the promised land. They said it's a great land flowing with milk and honey, but the people are huge. They are stronger than we are. We are not going to win. Have you heard the names Caleb? Joshua. These were the other two spies sent into the promised land. They said the same thing. The land is very, very prosperous, flowing with milk and honey. Let's go right now and attack because God has given us this land. There's a reason families still name their children Caleb and Joshua. Because they're faithful men that trusted in the Lord. In reality, they were strong and courageous. And how did they get to be that way? It says briefly in Numbers chapter 14 about Joshua, but it would be the same about Caleb. That he was a man in whom was the Spirit. Strength, courage, we don't possess it in and of ourselves, but strength and courage come to us through the Word. <coughs> How important it is that we continue in the things we've learned and become convinced of. They make us strong. They make us courageous. There's going to be challenging, challenges in your lives, Wyatt and Philip. I'm sure they're already happening in school when you're taught that God, the world wasn't created and that you can believe you're whomever you want, a boy or a girl or whatever, uh, that you can believe in whatever God you want, it's all okay. But as you've confirmed to us today what you've learned and become convinced of, I'd encourage you to keep listening. Same is true for pastors. The Apostle Paul said to Timothy, a co-worker, continue in the things you've learned and become convinced of <coughs> so that you won't go to the left or to the right. And reading is important. But like it says in our text, this book of the law must never depart from your mouth. Not only should your ears be listening to it, but your mouth. Take the time to read God's word privately in your home, in your bedroom. Come to God's house and read it together with brothers and sisters in Christ. Help your family when they are hurting with the challenges in life. Read the word of God to them. Someday, God willing, you may be fathers, and when you do become that, bring up your children in the knowledge of the Lord. How are you going to keep with this and be strong and courageous. You need to keep listening. You need to keep learning. You will find as you listen to God's word, God is making so many wonderful promises that as a result of these promises, you will be strong and you will be courageous. Joshua, you're taking the place of Moses. About whom it says there's never been a man like him. Saw God face to face. Did such miraculous signs. Okay, now you're next. You take over, Joshua. I can't do that. Be strong and courageous. 
because you will divide this land among this, these people, this land which I swore to their fathers that I would give to this people. You hear who's talking to you, the God who controls all things. He promises, I'm going to give you the land. It's done. It's already taken care of. You just need to lead the people in. And be strong and courageous, like your Bible verse says. Do not be terrified. Don't be overwhelmed. Yes, the men are stronger and maybe taller than you are. But don't be terrified because the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. And God says, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not abandon you and I will not forsake you. Dear brothers, brothers and sisters in Christ, be strong and courageous. There is a battle to be fought out there, and there will be challenges to your faith. But keep listening to God and His Word. Be strengthened by His promises. He is with you. He won't forsake you. He will bless you. He will help you. And knowing the Lord is with you always, seek to honor Him by the power of the Holy Spirit, keeping His will and proclaiming His word. Who are we? By nature, we are weak, frail, jars of clay. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you are children of God, and we are Christ's witnesses. May God help us proclaim His word so that many more may know of Christ's kingdom. Amen. Please rise. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will continue to guard you and keep you in Christ Jesus our Lord. At this time our thank offering will be brought before the Lord. Please remain standing. We join in singing hymn 695.
through water and word, he created faith in your hearts and adopted you into the family of believers. As you've matured and heard, this, heard and studied the scriptures, the Holy Spirit has enlightened your minds and preserved you as children of God. You've now expressed the desire to confess the truths you believe before your Savior, your family and friends, and this congregation. You are ready to say with St. Paul, I believe, therefore I have spoken. You have learned to examine your thoughts, words, and actions in the light of God's law. And you have experienced the comfort of forgiveness in the Savior's gospel. With this preparation, you are eager to receive the Savior's body and blood in the sacrament. As we worship with you on this day, we are filled with joy as we see how the Lord has grown your faith and your love. We are bringing our prayers to the Savior's throne of grace and imploring him to keep you faithful to him and his word until you join us and all believers in the glories of heaven. I now ask you, are you ready and willing to confess your faith? before the triune God and those who are worshiping with you today? If so, answer, I am. I am. Do you believe in God the Father? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Do you reject the devil along with all his lies and empty promises? If so, answer, I do reject him. Do you believe that all the books of the Bible are the inspired and inerrant Word of God? If so, answer, I do. I do. Do you believe that the teachings of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, as you learn to know them from Luther's small catechism, are faithful and true to the Word of God? If so, answer, I do. I do. Is it your sincere prayer and desire to remain faithful to your Lord Jesus and His Word all the days of your life? If so, answer yes, and I ask God to help me. Yes, and I ask God to help me. And is it your sincere prayer and desire to live a life that pleases God, to value his word and sacraments, and to witness your Savior wherever you go? If so, answer yes, and I ask God to help me. Yes, and I ask God to help me. Friends in Christ, the word of God urges us to pray for one another, and especially for the youth of the church. On this special day, it is fitting we bring our prayers before God, firmly believing that he alone is able to strengthen us by the power of the Holy Spirit and keep us faithful to the Savior until we die. Let us pray. Gracious Father, in holy baptism, you created faith in the hearts of these young people, and you gave them a new birth as members of your family. Help them remember their baptisms every day and find comfort in your promise that you will never leave them or forsake them. Give them strength to put down and drown the sinful nature that lives within them, that each day their faith may triumph in their living and loving and in their words and actions. Lead them to see and believe that in the word of the gospel they find forgiveness for their sins and relief for their guilt. Use the remembrance of your commandments to drive them to the comfort of the gospel, and then to guide them as they live for you and others. Empower them by the gospel of your Son to live in the world with kindness, humility, and patience, that others may see their good works and glorify you, their Heavenly Father. Help us, O Lord, provide fitting examples of faithfulness to your word and sacraments, 
Lead us to encourage and admonish, and admonish them in wisdom and love, even after they've left our homes and made new homes for themselves. <clears throat> and when the end comes and we all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, have compassion on us despite our sins, and accept us as eternal dwellers in your royal mansions through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior, who became sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Hear our prayers brought to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Nabinsky. God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ give you his Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and power, of prayer, of power and strength, of sanctification, and the fear of God. Your confirmation verse is from Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Peace in Jesus' name. Welcome. Philip Christopher Oblender. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope. Encourage your heart and strengthen you in every good deed and work. Your confirmation verse is the same. Remember Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Peace be with you. Welcome. Please rise. We will continue with our order of holy communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on this day poured out his promised Holy Spirit to testify to the truth and to remind his followers of everything he had said to them. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Jesus Christ, and we remember the great acts of love 
through which he has ransomed us from sin, death, and the power of the devil. By his incarnation, he became one with us. By his perfect life, he fulfilled your holy will. By his innocent death, he overcame hell. By his rising from the grave, he opened heaven. Invited by your grace and instructed by your word, we approach your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood, and preserve us in the true faith until we feast with him and all his ransomed people in glory everlasting. Amen. And we join in praying the prayer you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
poured out for you.
true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in the true faith and life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. Depart in peace. Amen. Please rise for a prayer. <clears throat> Besides the prayer that is printed in the bulletin for our liturgy, I wanted to do two other prayers that I was thinking about today and requested to pray for. One of which is a prayer for uh, the Snortheim family as they remember the death of Russell Snortheim, which was nine years ago today. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, light divine, we thank you for the spiritual blessings you give to us and our children through your life-giving word. We thank you for the strength and peace and joy given our congregation throughout this past school year in our Sunday school program, catechism lessons, and adult Bible study. Help us to continue in your word throughout the summer months that we will not stray from you to the right or to the left, but will honor you in all we say and do. O God of all comfort, we pray for the family of Russell Snortheim, whose death and entrance into eternal glory we remember having taken place nine years ago today. Be with family and friends, that they may remember your faithful servant with thanksgiving, and that they too may be given a spirit of wisdom, that they may number their days and trust in you to keep your never-failing promises to them and all of your children. Guide them and strengthen them that they may obey your word and joyfully serve you all the days of their life. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I apologize, we need to go back to the Song of Simeon. Let us go back and sing, O Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. <laughs>
Please be seated. I know everyone is tired with the singing we're doing today, but I have a feeling this one everyone will sing their loudest for M929. <laughs>
would like to allow for the labors of love now to make their presentation to our confirmant. Thank <laughs> you. 